Ten Commandments of Jesus Christ, Part 3. John 14, 15. Jesus said, If you love me, keep my commandments. John 14, 21. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I love him and will manifest myself to him. John 15, 10. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. Even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. So we have to receive Jesus' commandments. We must keep Jesus' commandments. And we must abide by Jesus' commandments. If we love him, we keep his commandments. If we keep his commandments and abide in it, abide in them, we love him. I don't say Jesus' commandments are only ten commandments. But we are going to study only ten commandments. And all the other commandments are related with these ten commandments. And all the other commandments of Jesus Christ are in the New Testament related with these commandments. When I say Jesus' commandments, I divide Jesus' commandments into five categories. What Jesus commanded to his disciples of his time. What Jesus commanded to the public crowd of his time. And number three, what Jesus commanded to his disciples, which is also applicable, which are also applicable to us today. Number four, what are the commandments Jesus gave to the public, to the crowd, to the people, to the individuals, which are also applicable today. And number five, the commandments, what we Jesus gave gently to all Christians, gently to all human beings. Uh, ma all mankind. So in these last three categories, what Jesus commanded to the disciples of his time, which are applicable to us, what Jesus commanded to the people in his time, which are applicable to us, what Jesus commanded to the humanity. From those commandments, we are just, we are going to meditate, we are meditating. Ten basic commandments and many other commandments related to the Ten Commandments. Last time we see, receive the Holy Spirit, the first commandment. It is not the first commandment Jesus gave. But Christianity, Christian living begins with receiving the Holy Spirit. The church was born on the day when they received the Holy Spirit. And about that Peter said, repent, believe, and be baptized, you shall receive the Holy Spirit. So three things are essential. The very first message of Jesus Christ, repent. What we understand by repent, repentance is forsaking our old ways, our lifestyle. Forsaking our old thoughts, our mindset, turning to God, turning to the word of God. That's the real repentance. And we must bear the fruit of repentance. And believe. What is it we believe? Believe that Jesus Christ was God, is God manifest in flesh. We believe that he is unchanging. And we believe that he will certainly reward everyone that seeks him diligently. His respect of no person, that you believe. And be baptized. That should be your decision. You believe and be baptized. Not a baptism given to you as a child. That has got no meaning. It's only a ceremony. You believe and be baptized. They that receive the word of God gladly were baptized. Jesus said, make them disciples and baptize them. So repent, 
believe and be baptized you shall receive the holy ghost the spirit of god that raised jesus from the dead will come into your mortal body it will dwell in your mortal body it will speak to you it will talk to you it will guide you and it will comfort you it will strengthen you it will lead you in all truth so receive the holy spirit that the first message peter gave on the day of pentecost the church was born on the day of pentecost when they all received the holy spirit number 2 they received the holy spirit follow jesus christ what do we mean by following jesus christ is not just going behind him the literal meaning of that greek word is walk with him in the same way walk with him in the same way spiritually and philosophically imitate him what is following jesus nothing but imitating jesus in a simpler way what jesus would do in that situation you do that what jesus would do in that situation you do that so we saw last week jesus has set an example for us to follow on his footsteps to follow on his footsteps and our example is nobody else our example is jesus christ if at all you take a man as an example abraham or isaac or jacob or david or the new testament saint peter or paul take them as an example and follow them as they follow jesus god as they follow jesus christ Paul is not a total example to us. Paul says follow me. What does that actually mean? We are not following Paul's ideology, Paul's philosophy, Paul's lifestyle. We follow Jesus, uh, uh, sorry, we follow Paul as we as he follows Jesus Christ. If we see an area where Paul was not following Jesus Christ, we need not follow Paul. so Paul, abraham was not a perfect example it may be glaring but that's why i brought that out last week if we follow abraham hagar will come in our life ketura will come in our life many concubines will come in our life so abraham is not a perfect example jacob is not a perfect example no other human being is a perfect example wherever they followed god wherever they worshiped god wherever they believed god from there we learn lessons follow christ imitate christ solomon is not a perfect example prophet jonah is not a perfect example my dear brother my dear sister somebody said if you read scriptures only in the life of daniel we don't find any glaring mistake in the life of daniel we don't find any glaring mistake immediately somebody said when everybody gathered before the statue that was erected by nebuchadnezzar and daniel was a prime minister at that time is elevated a very high post at that time was daniel there or not if daniel had not come he has not obeyed the king's commandment okay daniel came he is not found with shatrak mesha kabet nego do you mean that daniel worshiped the idol we don't know somewhere in the book of daniel that part is silent i don't know whether daniel came and somehow he broke the commandment of the king he worshiped the statue he didn't worship the statue i didn't know about it but for me daniel is not a perfect example daniel is not a perfect example my dear brother my dear sister in all situations imitate christ 
take up your cross and follow him. Whatever the ego, whatever the self that is to be crucified in you, that has to be crucified. Taking up your cross is not suffering, this suffering, that suffering. It's not taking up the cross of somebody else. It's not the taking up the cross of the family. Take up your cross. Where you have to be crucified. Where your ego has to be crucified. Where you know that who you are that is to be crucified. That is following Christ. We go to the third one today. Glory be to the Lord's holy name. Seek the kingdom of God. Seek ye the kingdom of God. The very first preaching. Repent. The kingdom of God is near. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. And the New Testament, what Jesus preached was called the gospel of the kingdom. The gospel of the kingdom. In the New Testament alone, 158 times, 158 times you see the word kingdom. 158 times. Out of 158 times, 127 times comes only in the gospel. That's about 80.3%, I think. About 80%. The word kingdom, kingdom, kingdom appears in the gospels. And very interestingly, out of 127 times, 127 times, 122 times, it appears only in the synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark and Luke. About the kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven, kingdom of sun, in many illustrations, Jesus used that word king, kingdom, that king. At that time, if you want to know the historical background, there was no king for Israel. There was no king for Israel. There was only Pilate, the Roman was the governor. Herod was not a Jew. And he was not the king of the Jews. He was not the king of the Jews. He was the king appointed by the Caesar. Romans were reigning them. But in all illustrations, mostly Jesus was talking about king. He was talking about the kingdom mystery. So when you understand the New Testament, you should understand the New Testament as a kingdom gospel. It talks about a government, it talks about a king, it talks about rules and regulations, it talks about a constitution, it talks about your constitutional rights, it talks about your constitutional privileges, it talks about your constitutional provisions. It's a kingdom. Jesus Christ came to establish his kingdom. He was calling people into his kingdom. Some people thought, that Jesus will make a revolt against the Roman Emperor and he would establish his kingdom on the earth. But Jesus' kingdom was spiritual, not earthly. But nevertheless, it's a kingdom. My dear brother, my dear sister, we should understand what the kingdom and its righteousness, its rules and regulations, its constitution. My dear brother, my dear sister, Matthew 6, uh, 33, but seek ye that the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. All these things shall be added unto you. So when we are in this kingdom, you get this other card, you'll get all these privileges. 
you have your uh, a ration card, your smart card. You'll get rice or you'll get wheat or you'll get sugar or oil, this, 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 this. You seek the kingdom of God and its righteousness. All these things will be added to you. What you need for clothing, what you need for your meat, what you need for your stay. All these things. Your clothing will be taken care of. Your food will be taken care of. Your stay will be taken care of. What is it we need from the government? We need from the government good place to stay. We don't want anybody to be sleeping on the road. Everybody needs a place to stay. The government must provide accommodation for everybody to stay. That's the responsibility of the government. The government must make sure that everybody get good food, healthy food, not just food, healthy food. We all must have good dress. These are our basic needs. And seek ye the kingdom of God and its righteousness, all these things will be added unto you. Only the people of the world, those who are not wise, they will seek after these things. They need money for a good accommodation, they need money for good food, they need money for good clothing. I mean, all of us slogging, all of us slogging, only for these three. Only for these three. All the other things are related to these three. A place to stay, Good food to eat, good clothes to wear. The people of the world will seek after these things. You seek the kingdom of God and its righteousness. All these things shall be added unto you. There was one lady, one amma. She was buying fish from a vendor who who brings fish in a basket and sells it on the street. She bargained and bargained and bargained. For ten paisa she was bargaining. After she bought a kilo of fish, all small fishes, that man took two or three fishes as a kosuru and he gave to her. Finally, she asked, how much I should pay for these two or three fishes? He said, I the question, I the free, which konga. She immediately put all the other fishes back into his basket. He said, hey, what are you doing? She said, I the question, I have to That man said, only when you buy this one kilo of fish, I can give the question. Only when you can buy this one kilo of fish, I can give the question. Similarly, only when you seek the kingdom of God and its righteousness, all this kosuru will be added to you. But the problem that we want only kosuru, we don't want the kingdom of God and its righteousness. We want only kosuru. So we get a big question, now what's the kingdom of God and its righteousness? How can I seek the kingdom of God and its righteousness? What is God's kingdom? He gave a lot of illustrations to explain. Now the very study of the kingdom of God, it's a, it's a very extensive, I don't want to get too into it. God willing only about the kingdom of God, I speak some other time. But I take only one verse today. I take only one verse today. I love that you all could go to that verse. Romans 14, 17. I just let least make a note of it. Romans 14, 17. 
For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. The kingdom of God is not meat and drink. The kingdom of God is not just food. There is another meaning for it. The kingdom of God is not based on some religious festivals. Food and drink. The kingdom of God is not just food. And also it has got another meaning. The kingdom of God is not a systematic religious festivals. You must start with Pongal. Then you must have uh, Krishna Jayanti. You must have Vijay Dasami. And then you must have Deepavali. Then you must have Deepam. Then you must have Pongal. This is how we must have our religion. No, not so. Or you may say, we must have Good Friday, then we must have Easter, then we must have Halloween night also. We celebrate for the devil also. Then All Saints Day, All Souls Day, we must very dutifully follow. And September we should not forget Mary, Mary's birthday in September, and how they got that idea. Then December, we must have Christmas. If only we celebrate Christmas, then the next summer we can crucify him. If he is not born, how can we crucify him? Somebody asked Bernard Shah. Yeah, he, was not a, uh, he was not a professing Christian. He was a rationalist. So somebody asked him, yeah, at least for Good Friday you don't go to church. You don't, go, don't you go to church for Good Friday? He said, you want me to go there to crucify Jesus. Good Friday, why do you go to church? Crucify Jesus. This is not the kingdom of God. This is not the kingdom of God. This calendar is not the kingdom of God. That meat, that drink, that fasting, that Lent, that's not Christianity. That's not the gospel kingdom. That's not the good news. Hey, in two months, Christmas is coming. That's not the good news. Jingle bell, jingle bells is not the good news. The Christmas Tata is not the good news. That's not the go kingdom gospel. So it's not food, it's not meat and drink. So here the, it says, the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. Then what it is? But it's righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. That can be better understood. Number one, righteousness in the Holy Ghost. Number two, peace in the Holy Ghost. Number three, joy in the Holy Ghost. So when Jesus says, seek ye first the kingdom of God, number one, seek ye the righteousness of God. Number two, seek ye the peace of God. Number three, seek ye the joy of God. Then all these things shall be added unto you. So we study these three things today. Seek ye the righteousness of God. What do you mean by the righteousness of God? The Greek word for righteousness is dikio suna. Dikio suna. D-I-K-I-O-S-U-N-A. 
yene dikiyo suna what does it actually mean dikiyo suna it's a legal term uh, those who have studied your commerce you will understand this term equity equity the literal meaning is conformity with god's rules that's equity what's right for god is right for me righteousness right standing with god philosophical it's conformity conforming yourselves what the nilai conforming to god's rules values god's worth god's standard that is his righteousness if god says honor your father and mother what's righteousness equity he must have an equal share in his commandments you can demand more you can demand less when the bible says honor your father and mother doesn't mean that you have to build a temple for them no when the bible says honor your father and mother you can't just leave your father and mother in the church and you go on your way to earn money i left them in the church and i have paid some uh, 10000 rupees to the church now the church can take care of my father and mother no equity conformity to god's rules conformity to god's rules you must understand what does that rule actually mean we got so many rules in the kingdom in our constitution then we have got interpretations we have got bylaws we have to understand what that law says then only we can conform to those rules those regulations so what does actually mean forgive one another how many times i should forgive seven times in a day a seven times 70 490 times a day okay he has made a mistake 491 times then what can i do uh, what is that uh what the value of that commandment is it should i count one 2 3 400 401 403 403. should i count like that so righteousness is conforming to that value many a times we go by the word and we lose that value we don't conform only the rule the value of the truth the spirit of that rule when the fathers of our constitution what was the spirit with that they wrote that constitution probably they may not have expected an assembly speaker would do like this they might not have expected a governor of a state will do like this they might not have expected a minister or a chief minister will behave like this they might not have expected a parliamentary parliamentarian will talk like this my dear brother my dear sister so at times they say you should understand the spirit of the constitution but our god has not given any rule in a mistaken way i i never thought I never thought this type of pastors will come. I never thought this type of apostles will come. No. We can understand the rules and the regulations of God 
only on its value, not on the letter. As I said, honor your father and mother, they developed a practice. They pay a, a particular amount to the church treasury, say today 10,000 10, rupees. And they leave the father and mother in the temple and they would go. So the temple will give them food. As somebody those are coming to the temple will give the charity. Even today that practice is in some other religion. Apama koil anadi avutittu poiduvanga. Ava koil la vanda anga dharma saapadu poiduvanga. Koil ku varravanga thana dharma kudupanga. Indha vayasana kaladu kattigal koil la ukandu varravanga la bless pannittu kuri sollittu ukandirupanga saagara varaiku chetta piragi koil la dharma panathil eduthu avangala erichiruvanga. Anada pano nu solluvanga. That was a practice even among the Jews. That's what Paul says. Don't make the widows a burden to the church. Children should take care of the widows. They are widowed mother or widowed father. The children should take care of them. Don't make them a burden to them. That was a practice. Even today we see that practice in some other religions, even some people in Christianity. Or they put them in a home for the aged. So you don't understand by the letter, try to understand God's rules and regulations by its spirit. Once one girl asked me, once one girl asked me, when I, a year earlier, Uncle, the Bible says, don't adorn yourself with gold and pearl. Poni nalu muttukali nalu alangariyam. Is it wrong to use plastic? Is it wrong to use plastic? Because the Bible doesn't say platinum, the Bible doesn't say silver, the Bible doesn't say imitation gold, the Bible doesn't say plastic or whatever it may be. It's not the gold and pearl. Try to understand the spirit behind it. So seek the righteousness of God. Conformity with His rules, with His regulations, your lifestyle. That's repentance. Forsake your old lifestyle. Forsake the lifestyle of the world. Forsake the lifestyle of the world. My dear brother, my dear sister, the fashions of the world pass away. The fashions of the world pass away. Now some boys are sporting with low hip pants, low rice pants, sagging. They can't, they can't go more than that. They can go more than that. Then high heap will automatically come. That's all. They have to change. The fashion will change. The fashion will change. Automatically it will change. But you don't go by the Spirit of the world, your mindset changes. Modest dress. You have to understand, you have to interpret what is the modest dress. The Bible says about the boys, don't grow your hair long. Somebody asked me how long it should be. One inch? Two inches? How long you can grow your hair or how short you can cut your hair? Whether you grow your hair long or you cut your hair short, I tell you, your hair should not touch your heart. Your hair should not touch your heart. Little like somebody asked me, how long you can grow your hair? I said, as long as it doesn't touch your heart, I said. 
My dear, I don't know how many of you understand me. My dear brother, my dear sister, that value, that worth, that standard, the Bible standard, you take any good dictionary and find out the different meanings of equity. One of the powerful meanings of equity is conformity, conformity with expressed rules, values, worth and standard. That's equity, that's righteousness. You are a Christian, you want to be a Christian, then seek God's righteousness, God's standard of living, God's rules for living, God's rules for husband and wife relationship, God's rule for parent children relationship, God's rule in your business. Conform. Conform. Conform, any other word you can say for conform? Conform or, how can I put it? Understand God's rules, conform to that. Conform to God's standard, Bible standard. You don't want to conform to Bible standard, then don't be a Christian. Don't be a Christian. Be a Christian, conform to God's standard, God's rules. Be equal to that. Be conformed to that. Have a share in that. Have an equal share in that. It's a Love your neighbor as yourself. What's equity? It's same for Robert Simon. It's same for Leo Simon. It's same for Vivek. It's same for Selva. It's different for Vivek, or different from Yemil, or different for Geo. No. Equity, equal. It's a charter account. Am I right? Equity? It's equal. It's not different for Annan and different for Thambi. It's equal for everybody. His law is equal for everybody. The Bible says, love your neighbor. Immediately Jenny says, he says, I can love my neighbor. My neighbor is good. Leanne says, no, no, I can't love my neighbor. My labor is not good. Will he, she say? What do I say? You got to say that. It's a rule for Jenny, it's a rule for Leon, it's a rule for Hepsi. Love your neighbor. It's not a question of who is by your side is good or bad. Love your neighbor as yourself. That's equity. That's righteousness. It's a legal term. So conform to the rules and regulations of the Bible, that's what Jesus tells you, seek ye the kingdom. It's kingdom of God and his righteousness. Apply God's rules and God's principles in your life, in every area of your life, and it's equal. Husband, Christian husband should obey the Bible, Christian wife should obey the Bible, Christian parents should obey the Bible, Christian children should obey the Bible. What's the rule for mommy? It's the Bible. What's the rule for the child? It's the Bible. What's the rule for the mother-in-law? It's the Bible. What's the rule for the daughter-in-law? It's the Bible. It's not the daughter-in-law should follow the Bible and the mother-in-law doesn't need to follow the Bible. That's not a Christian home. If the mother-in-law is not saved, it's different. If the daughter-in-law is not saved, that's different. When you are saved, the husband is saved. The saved husband says, we should pay tithe. The saved wife says, no, 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 we need not pay tithe. No, that's not the Christian home. 
It's equity. If it's a rule for the wife, it's a rule for the husband. It's a rule of the Bible. It's a rule of the Bible. In other words, what is right with God is right with all. If it is right with Warren, it's right with Michelle. If it is right with Michelle, it's right with Warren. I'm just giving the names to drive home these points. It can't be right with one and not right with another. You can just use your names there. My dear brother, my dear sister, that is seeking the kingdom of God. Seeking the righteousness of God. Kingdom of God is nothing but the righteousness in the Holy Spirit. Righteousness in the Holy Spirit. Number two, seek ye the peace in God. Seek ye the peace in God. The word peace in Greek is Irene. Irene. Even some use that name Irene as a proper noun. The name girl baby is Irene. Irene means peace, rest, prosperity. Righteousness speaks about a life pleasing to God, and peace speaks about a life. Living with no anxiety, no worry, fullness of rest, well settled and secured assurance. That's called peace. The Hebrew word is shalom. It's not the absence of war. A life with no anxiety. A life with rest. Maybe because of faith. We believe he is. We believe he is the rewarder of them who seek him diligently. No perturbed. No perplexity. A profound peace. Peace that passeth all understanding. Even yesterday one servant of God asked. He said, but you are always cool. I said, this is a complaint against me even when I was, uh, I was working. Uh, in, uh, I mean, my, in my twenties, it was a complaint against me. Uh, my principal said, Simon, you are always very cool. God is there. God will take care of it. God will see to it that Peace that is born out of faith, confidence, the strength in God. That peace that passeth all understanding. The time that I got saved, uh, it was a beautiful incident. When I was reading that Sunday school story, uh, Jesus was in sleeping in the boat. When there was a storm, the rough weather, they all went and woke up Jesus and Jesus came and calmed the storm. So they always said, Jesus is in the boat. Whenever there's a problem, go and pray to Jesus. Whenever there's a problem, go and pray. This is the Sunday school story I have learned. When I got saved, I was reading the same story. It was little, per I was perplexed. Jesus rebuked the disciples. So Jesus was not happy with that prayer. When there is a storm you are praying, Jesus is not happy. Before he could calm the storm, he will rebuke you. Before he would rebuke the sea, he will rebuke you. At times, there will be no more storm in the heart than in the sea. There will be more storm in the heart than in the sea. So Jesus rebuked them. I was wondering what it was. Then Jesus revealed, literally, Jesus revealed that story to me in a different way. The twelve disciples were in the boat. Jesus was in the boat. The boat was in the mid-sea. The sea became rough. There was a wind contrary. 
they could not row against that wind and the wave. They went and woke up Jesus. Jesus came and calmed the storm. We know the story. The question is, you want to be a disciple of Jesus or you want to imitate Jesus? Do you want to imitate the, one of the disciples of Jesus or you want to imitate Jesus? If you imitate the disciples of Jesus, when there is a storm, you will go and cry to Jesus. You will pray, you will fast. You will say, Jesus, Jesus, carry us down not, we perish. Carry us down not, Jesus. You will cry. But if we imitate Jesus, nothing it happens. Now many people want to imitate Jesus. If we imitate Jesus, storm or what wind, no problem, let me sleep. The boat is getting rocked. The boat was getting rocked. I think it's only Brother Joe here will be knowing it practically. Anybody, any other seaman here? No, I don't think anybody else. I was told that it, that at times even the ship was thrown to the air and will come and fall. Is that true, Joe? In that waves, it will be just thrown up and it will fall. I could not imagine how it would be. What will happen to your boat? Rock and rock and rock. Only once I have gone into a ship. Small distance from Kanyakumari that uh, Vivekan and the rock I have gone in the ship. Not more than that. That is also when there was, when the sea was very calm. No risk and all. Please listen. I, when, only once I was taken into the boat, one of, a ship, an officer took me. Every bed has got this belt and as we got the belt in the car or in the flight. For the bed they got belt, otherwise they will roll. But Jesus was sleeping in that storm. I don't think he had any belt. Pa. Roll and roll and roll. If you want to imitate Jesus, you will have that rest. That's why Peter, tomorrow he is going to be beheaded, executed. Tomorrow, night, nallatuku. The angel was coming and waking him up. Oh, oh. Tomorrow he is going to be executed. His friend James was executed, beheaded. Same Herod is going to behead you in the public. He learned that lesson. No need to cry. No need for that prayer. No need going and telling Jesus, 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 carry us down, not we perish. You won't perish. Jesus said we'll go over to the other side. We'll go over to the other. Seek that peace. God is with me. What man can do? That's the faith Elisha had. Elisha prayed that Gehazi must have that faith. That's the faith David had when he faced Goliath. It pauses all understanding. It pauses all understanding. When they were crossing the Red Sea, when they are walking through the river Jordan that was overflowing on the banks, that peace that passeth all understanding. We don't understand how somebody can maintain that peace in, uh, peace in that criteria. My dear brother, my dear sister. So number two, that peace That's why I told you, one commandment, we see a few commandments related to that. Seek ye the kingdom, got three parts. Seek ye God's righteousness, God's rules, 
value system, his rights, and its equity. It's the same for everybody. Everybody must have an equal share. One for husband, one for wife. No. What the husband should follow, the husband should follow. What the wife should follow, the wife should follow. It is equal. That rule is not equal. That rule is not equal. Equity is not that an equal share for everybody. That's not equity. He has got this much of share, so he must get this much of profit. This is husband, see he must follow this rule. This is wife, she must follow this rule. This child must follow this rule. Father must follow this rule. Pastor must follow this rule. A believer must follow this rule. It's equal for everybody. The rule is not equal, but everybody must follow the rule that pertain to them equally. Pertain to them equally. It doesn't mean pastor can break the rule, only believers must follow the rule. No. Pastor must follow his rule. Equally, a believer must follow his rule. A wife must follow her rule. Equally, a husband must follow his rule. That's equity. Number two, what is meant by seeking first the kingdom of God? Seek his peace. That rest. Born out of confidence, born out of faith, born out of knowing the will of God, born out of his assurance that God is with me, and God is with me, what man can do for me. Born out of the knowledge of the eternity. They, can kill, they cannot kill me, they can kill only my body. My body is not I, I am inside my body. When they kill me, I am there liberated. When they kill me, I get my freedom. When they kill me, I come out. They can destroy me. They can destroy only my body. When they destroy my body, what happens? I get liberty. I, Robert, my thought process, my mindset, my soul, my spirit, that Robert, that Robert who is in this body, that Robert will come out. That Robert finds his freedom. They cannot kill my body. My dear brother, my dear sister, that's a deliverance. So you are knowledge your faith, your assurance, your confidence, that gives you peace. God will take care. God will lead. God will not forsake. Faithful is he that has called us. He has led us here that he will lead us henceforth. That confidence, that seek his peace, Number three, this is very, very interesting and very important. Joy of the Holy Ghost. What do you mean by that word, joy? The word joy is kara, K-H-A-R-A. Cheerfulness. The French word, from that only that English word joy came. For that, the literal meaning of kara is jole, J-O-L-E. I don't know how I should pronounce it. J-O-L-E. Anybody French here? You can ask Ashok. From that only, the English word came jolly. Jolly. Many of them in Pentecost or some pious people, they feel jolly is a bad word. They don't want to be, they don't want to have jolly. The literal meaning of joy, what is joy? Jolly. Now children may be very happy about it. Ah, jolly. 
So far he thought joy is very religious, very pious. Joy of the Holy Ghost. I did not literally, I don't know what I'm saying. Parasitavila jolly are correct, but then a joy of the Holy Ghost. Nala jolly, Sandoshma, Mahilchia, Kavala Lame, Katapatha Quare. Whether there is yield in the wine or not. Whether there is wheat or not, whether there is barley or not. This is the real strength, joy of the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom of God. Christianity is not a sandosha marka than a Christianity. Nala sandosha marka. All through the day, the Boys who are helping here, boys working in the office. Whenever they, they are wrong, I may correct them. At times I'll be very harsh on them, very strict. But all the rest, you are, they all will enjoy a jolly good, good time. Jolly good time. We laugh together. We'll be happy together. So the joy literally means being jolly. In Tamil we read that word Mahulchi. Mahulchi. The word Mahulchi comes from the word Mahilampu. Mahilampu. There is another word for gladness, Kali Gurdal. Kali Gurdal. The Tamil word Kali Gurdal comes from the word Kali, Toddy, Kad. Not Arak, Charayan, Kal. That gives a type of a Elated feeling, they say. The people of the world, they get that feeling when they take the kal or brandy whiskey. When they take the kal, they'll get that jolly mood. Like people of the world, when they drink kal, what type of a feeling they get, the children of God, with the Holy Ghost, they get that feeling. That Mahilampu, a very lovely smell, and it is used for aromatic therapy, when you smell that Mahilampu, it's a something like a stress buster. It will relieve you from all pain, all anxiety, they say. I haven't seen my lamp. But there is an aromatic therapy, even a good aroma for many people. You are very tired. You use some perfume, you feel refreshed. That my lamp can refresh somebody, a type of a aromatic treatment. That is Mahulchi. That is Mahulchi. That is Kali Hurdal. Happiness is entirely different. Sandosham is entirely different. Happiness comes from happenings. Because you have come first, you are happy. Because something happened, because you got some one lakh rupee, you are happy. Because you got one crore rupee, you are happy. Because your husband is very goody goody obedient child, you are happy. Eh? You are happy because of that. You are very happy because your wife also obeys. You are very happy because something happens. So happiness is based on happenings. But joy, gladness, 
is not based on something happening. Whether there is wheat or not, whether there is barley or not, whether there is oil or not, there's the joy in the Holy Ghost. Being jolly in the Lord. Seek ye that. Seek ye that. What is after all Christianity? Seeking the kingdom of God. What is seeking the kingdom of God? Seeking God's righteousness, God's peace and God's joy. Jesus said, I give you my joy, unspeakable joy. It can't be explained. I give you joy. Jesus wants you to be jolly. Don't think holiness is just look like in a, uh, sitting very stern like a statue. Don't think that you are very holy because you look like Buddha. Christianity is not just looking like Buddha. Or having a very serious face is not the value of Christianity. I don't say don't be jocular. I don't say that you have to laugh like a mad person. In the same time, you must have joy within you. You must have gladness. That is the kingdom of God. Seek ye the kingdom of God. I love to read a number of Bible passages. I just read one passage. I'm going to read the whole chapter. One passage. Uh, Colossians chapter 3. 17 verses. Just as a, a, what I can say, a foretaste. As a small example. How this kingdom life could be. How this Christian life could be. Colossians 3. Just keep that passage open. From verse 1. If you then be risen with Christ. What do you mean by risen with Christ? Colossians 2.12. If you are baptized in Christ. Only in baptism we are risen with Christ. So if you are baptized. If you are a Christian. Seek these things which are above. Heavenly values. Where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on the things above. Not on the things on the earth. That's a Christian living. Not that you have to buy a house, that to buy a this, buy that, buy a car, buy a bigger car, bigger, bigger car. Don't set your affection on the things on the earth. When God knows that you need it, God will give you. Number three. For you are dead. And your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ who is our life. Our life is Christ. Our life is Christ. When Christ who is our life shall appear. Then shall you also appear with him in glory. Mortify therefore. Therefore because of this reason. Mortify your members which are upon earth. Fornication. Fornication is what the world calls love. Premarital love. That's fornication. Uncleanness. Seeing unclean picture, reading unclean material, posting unclean material, unclean thoughts, inordinate affection, unacceptable affection, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence. Bad thoughts, bad fellowship, bad friendship, evil, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Covetousness. Mortify the members of your body, which could cause these things. You belong to a kingdom. There's a different kingdom. In that kingdom life, you can't have fornication. Other girls may have many boyfriends. Other boys can have many girlfriends. But you are a Christian. You, you understand that as a fornication. You will marry somebody and love that person. You marry somebody and love that person. It's not that marry somebody and love somebody else. 
That's adultery. So you want to have a good husband who has never loved any other woman. That Pamela's father, that beautiful movie. He wanted a boy for her, his daughter who has now, never kissed any other girl. You want to marry a boy who has never taken the hand of any other girl. And you want to marry a girl who has never given her hand to anybody else. Hand or cheek or lips or any other part of the body. You want to have marry a virgin. Marry a person who is true to you and to you only and continue to love her. Otherwise, the fornication, your idea about fornication is different. Let me go quickly. So, covetousness or uncleanness, it's inordinate affection. But now, you also put off all these, not only these things, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communion out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds and put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that creator. Now you have become a new being. That's why forsake your old lifestyle, forsake your old mindset. Turn to the word of God. You are putting on a new man. You have got a new lifestyle. Verse 11. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew or circumcision or uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, there's no nothing like Anglo-Indian or Tamilian or Malayali or North Indian. North Indian can be like this or Malayali can be like this. It's Anglo-Indian culture. You have put off all those things. Now you are a new creation in Christ. This is the Christian value. It's not the Anglo-Indian value or the Prasavaka value or Wateri value or Chatiyar value or Nadar value. It's the Christian value. It's a Christian value. No Greek, no Gentile, no Scythian, nothing. We are Christian. Born or free, but Christ is all and in all. Put on therefore as the elect of God. You are the elect of God. Put on therefore, holy and beloved Bowels of mercies. Number one, put on bowels of mercies. Put on kindness. Put on humbleness of mind. Put on meekness. Put on long suffering. Put on forbearing one another. Put on forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even I as Christ forgave you, so also you put on all these things. And above all these things, about the humility of mind, about this kindness, about these mercies, etc., etc., about all these things, put on charity, that's love, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also you are called in one body, and be thankful. Let the peace of God. You are a new creation. That's the seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Let the word of Christ dwell in you. Turn to the word of God. Let the word of God, word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, hymns and spiritual songs. Psalm speaks about singing with music in mood, rhythm, Timing, that song. Hymns means kirtana, devotional songs that could bring glory to God. And spiritual songs, born out of the Holy Spirit. Even singing in the Spirit are composed by the leading of the Spirit. So, singing with grace, sing them with grace, with divine influence in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever you do, in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. That's a new nature. Fornication, uncleanness, throw it off. Anger, wrath, throw it off. 
you are a new creation mercy forbearing forgive, forgiving kindness love put on that put on that sing with the grace sing with the grace in your hearts whatever you do do it for the glory of god you are god's spirit principle seek ye first the kingdom of god and its righteousness and all these things will be added to you so today think about living a new life in god you are god's elect put on god put on a new man your life is hid with christ seek the things which are above not the things on the earth so today the third commandment of jesus christ seek ye the kingdom of god the kingdom of god is by your side in a simpler word live as a christian apply your kingdom rule in your day to day life apply his righteousness seek his peace have his joy in your life shall i pray for you dear father god almighty we thank you we praise you we worship you for the message that you have given to your people o lord help us understand your kingdom principles o lord lord help every one of us have a life that shows that we are christians o lord thank you father god that you have taught us to receive the holy spirit to follow you and to see kingdom principles in our life o lord thank you lord that you have chosen this little flock to teach them these commandments help us know your commandments Lord keep your commandments and abide in your commandments O Lord that we may know that we love you bless your people in Jesus name we pray amen